off the track heard around the country. A video of an Aussie chiropractor cracking the spine of a tiny four-day-old baby has gone viral around the world. Many people have condemned his actions, but today he speaks to us in an exclusive interview that might just change your mind. Before we meet him, let's take a look at that confronting video that sparked all the controversy. I'm going to take that contact there like that. I have to, unfortunately, just extend her a little bit to get it in the right place. That's why we. That's why we be quick. Hey, darling. Hey. 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 You'll stop. Yeah. You'll stop. Yeah. It didn't really hurt. If that hurt, you'd still be crying. But you back asleep again. Melbourne-based chiropractor Dr Ian Rossborough has faced widespread condemnation from the medical profession for his treatment of baby Millicent, and he joins us now. Welcome, Dr. Thank you. Now, can you understand why there's been such an outcry over this video? It's, it's, it's hard to watch. Yeah, look, I understand that the, you know, the image, if you haven't seen it before, it would, you know, is definitely could be confronting. It's hard for me because I've been doing this for 20 years, so... And I know what it felt like at the end of my finger. It's just a very gentle uh, finger pad touch, and there's not much depth involved. Uh, but, yeah, I can definitely appreciate that when you look at it visually, uh, it could be confronting. I mean, medical doctors have dubbed your video eye-watering, incredibly dangerous and even cruel. What do you say to that? Well... First of all, I'd like to thank you guys for having me on, to give me an opportunity to explain safe chiropractic, you know, to your viewers. The, the, you know, to put it in perspective, there is a divide probably between some parts of the medical profession and chiropractic. It's based on, I think, largely based on misunderstanding, and this is where we as a profession have to sort of take up the job of doing our best moving forward to Ian, explain excuse, what we do better. Excuse me, Ian, in, you say it's mm. based on misunderstanding, but doctors would say they are basing what, what they believe on medical evidence. And so how then does doing what we saw in that video with Millicent, how does that treat colic? How, how can that possibly help? OK, it seems, it seems like there's two questions there, but first of all, the, there's no actual treatment of colic as such. Like, it's not like the baby comes in with a diagnosis of colic and then we set about treating colic. Uh, we don't have an actual, like, it's, it's not like medicine where you have a symptom plus a symptom equals colic and then there's a medication to treat the colic. There's no, like, colic bone. There's no part of the spine that's directly related to colic. What we do when a sick person comes to us of any age is look at their whole health picture and ask, what can we do? What can we do to help? What, what part of this problem is for us? And in her case, that gorgeous little baby had a very specific problem in her spine that was causing her a lot of distress and a lot of pain. So what, though, evidence do you have to suggest that that helped with her colic? Because the, the head of the AMA in Victoria, Dr Tony Barton, he says that there's no evidence that that sort of spinal manipulation on a newborn is going to help colic. And uh, he says, you know, he's a doctor who's got 30 years' experience, that he, he was flabbergasted by the video. And I must say, I, I'm not a medical expert at all, but I'm a mum, and, and I'm quite shocked seeing that. Yeah. Well, I've got 30 years or more in the health profession too. I was in the hospital system for 12 years as a nurse and I've spent the last 20 years dedicating all day, every day, to assessing and correcting the spine. Uh, that's my specialty area, that's all I do. And we have very stringent protocols for assessing spinal dysfunction and uh, assessing the indicators for spinal dysfunction. So what exactly, what exactly, how exactly did you know that this four-day-old baby had spinal dysfunction? Well, that's a really long story because, you know, and I'd really encourage your, your viewers to look at the whole video. Uh, you know, just go online and have a look at it because you'll see that really this is a story that's come out of a baby getting well with no side effects and no injury, very safe health practice and a very happy baby and a very happy parent, or two parents. But, but um, what, I guess we're just trying to understand why did a four-day-old four baby actually need spinal manipulation in the first place? 
Yeah, well, the mechanism of injury for a baby, the, the list is so long. If, you know, you've, did you say you've had a baby yourself? I do have a baby, a brand new baby. He's five months old. But what I can't understand is, it was, was, he cry, was she crying so much that she needed spinal manipulation? Is that what you had originally said? Yeah, well, this, this young, this poor thing, she'd cried since the day she was born and her parents were beside themselves. Isn't that what most babies do? No, not cry incessantly. You, the average baby cries about two and a half hours a day, three hours a day. Um, colicky babies, I mean, colic is really just a reference to a symptom. It basically describes a baby that's crying incessantly. Um, it's crying more than six hours a day and, and it has an unknown cause. Uh, in this situation, the baby was literally crying from most of, the, most of the day and all of the night. Intractable crying, the parents were beside themselves and they couldn't find an answer. Uh, they did have a good experience with their older boy who was born in it with a lot of distress and we fixed him when he was younger so they, they brought uh, little Millicent in to see if I could help. So, but you said that you used this spinal manipulation to treat colic, but in March, the Chiropractors Board of Australia, the board of your own industry, warned chiropractors not to make claims that spinal manipulation can treat diseases or development problems, including digestive problems like reflux and colic. Your own, the board that regulates your own industry says that you shouldn't make these claims. And that's why we're not making that claim. Um, it has been slightly misunderstood. My role is to look for spinal dysfunction. And we know that the, the evidence is there to, to draw a link between spinal dysfunction and the neurology of the human body. So Where is that evidence? Where is that evidence? I Can suppose I that's, just... that's what we're finding, or I'm finding, um, puzzling. Can I step in here? Mm -hmm. I... Um, yeah. At the age of 23, I used to suffer migraines, terrible migraines, and I fell over during a show, and the people that were running the show took me along to Frank Forster, who was a chiropractic osteopath, naturopath. He did spinal manipulation on me, and I never... Well, I got headaches, but not as bad, and he... he he kept me really well. I went to him for over 35 years. Mm -hmm. So I do believe in... in that you can be fixed by a chiropractic. That's I right. think what the girls can't get their head around well, it's is what the medical use profession it. can't get our the, the medical profession can't get its head around is where is the evidence to back this up? Where are the peer reviewed uh, studies on 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 chiropractic mm -hmm. working on babies? Where are the, but the it's long term clinical worked on this baby? But, oh, but I don't think we know that, do we? I mean, this is a four day old baby. Right. Honestly, if you did that to my baby, I I I, I would be terrified <laughs> what I might do to I'd you. Like to. <laughs> I I'm just, I'm really, I'm really, I want you to explain yourself, I'm dying to know, but where are the peer-reviewed studies, where are the long-term clinical trials that, okay. that show that this actually works? And don't okay, babies grow out of colic within a couple of months anyway? Okay, so there's so many questions there. Um, first of all, I'm not an expert on research and you could, you know, there are people within the profession that have all the research at hand that they could hand across. Anybody who's but, but um, shouldn't, prepared but, but, but to get if on... You're going to, if you go, sorry to interrupt, but if you're going to perform this sort of therapy on a four-day-old baby that has incredibly delicate physiology, shouldn't you really be across all of that research? Yeah, of course. And what I'm trying to say is in a very short time, because I imagine we don't have all day to chat, that if we get into... If I start, you know, referencing things or dropping things on the table, it's going to be using up a lot of time. People can access the, the, the studies that are out there. Well, I must admit, in terms of randomised clinical trials, we are light on, but in the area of uh, chiropractic that we mostly look after, we're, we've got quite good evidence. And well, actually, the, fact, chiro all... the chiropractic board, sorry to interrupt, but I've, mm. I've, I've got to pull you up. The chiropractic board actually says, given, and this is a quote, given the lack of good quality evidence about chiropractic care of children, more research is required to understand this issue. That's not exactly yeah. a glowing no, endorsement of the issue, of the No, of I was the going therapy. to say the same thing. I was going to go ahead and say the same thing, that not just chiropractic, though, health practitioners across the board have, you know, they have a search for evidence that's ongoing. And, you know, what I'd like to see is that all healthcare professionals that have got um, the patient at hand, like at the front of their mind, 
uh, pulls all their research, we get together and we do what we can to help the public because, you know, that's what they deserve, really good health care uh, provided in a safe manner. Look, uh, we, we'd love to talk to you a little further after the break. If you can just stay around. Um, we need mm -hmm. to take a very quick break, but we'll we'll be, we'll be back in just sure. a few moments. See you in a second. Thank you. We're talking to chiropractor Dr Ian Rossborough who made headlines around the world after cracking the back of a four-day-old baby. He joins us from our Melbourne studios. And Dean, you have a question for him? Yeah, absolutely. Well, now, I have also had uh, lots of chiropractic work and I think it works great, but I've always understood that it's about muscle tension and short ligaments. Uh, with a four-year-old baby, what possible muscle tension or ligament uh, structures is realigning their bones that have to be corrected? I think mean, there's got to be risks to that newborn to do that sort of thing. Is that not correct? Okay, so there's, I would say that there's greater risks in not correcting a problem when we find it in a baby. And I should point out, because this is really important, that, that we can only correct something if it's there. We, there's, the only thing that we can do is fix a problem that exists. If there was no problem on that baby, I would have had to say to the parents, look, there's nothing for me to do here, and, you know, push them back to the medical person that they came from. But yeah, I, as, I, I to answer the question, sorry? Yeah. Yeah, I have to say, I, I think that this is total bunkum, and I think you probably are taking advantage of really vulnerable new parents, but um, I can't even really watch it without wincing, so I really need to know how many of these actually are you doing every week or every month? Okay, so what, what's happening here is that you're not actually, um, you not, don't not know what you're seeing. The, the pressure of my finger is just the end of my finger, just a fingertip, and it's directed to a very specific part of the child's dysfunctional spine. It's, it's not putting a force in the body that the baby can't handle. And it was, it'd be a lot more dangerous to leave that joint in the wrong position. There's a research study that's come out of Germany that shows young boys, like 18, 19 years old, with severe degeneration of the spine. And sorry now, we all to interrupt, know... how many, so how many though of these spinal manipulations have you done on four day old babies? Oh, quite, a, quite a number I would say over the years, like over the last 20 years there'd be a lot of parents bring their children to me. Um, I, one of you, I'm not quite sure who I'm talking to right now but one of the ladies I was talking to was saying they've got a new baby. Um, you, if you haven't had the experience yourself, you would definitely know people who have had you know, babies with intractable crying, they're extremely distressed. Um, you've been to somebody else, you've been to a medical person, the treatment they're offering isn't working. And, you know, the poor parents are beside themselves. Have and you used this on your own children, this type yes. of spinal manipulation? Yeah. So you feel confident yeah. enough to use it on your own kids? Oh, absolutely, because all we're doing is taking something that's not natural and making it natural. That's what I meant before when I said, if, there's, if we can't find anything, there's nothing for us to do. So basically, and we look for, by the way, you probably would help you to know that our education is extremely intensive. Our undergraduate degree is most like the medical profession, than, uh, medical doctor's degree than anything else. Uh, our Bachelor of Science is similar to theirs. Our second degree is in a Bachelor of Clinical Science Chiropractic and theirs is in a Bachelor of Surgery. And um, some doctors may take issue with, with that particular claim. I suppose we're, we are about to run out of time, but just as an aside, mm -hmm. are you, do you support vaccination? Oh, look, um, first of all, I definitely pr support a parent's choice to vaccinate. But I just, if we could get back to the part that I'm an expert at, which is spinal adjusting, um, in terms of the safety to the child and the, I guess, the, the rationale for why we did what we did, it's all based on the indicators that we get from the person. So that poor little baby, she had swelling under the skin. Uh, one of the gentlemen there asked me a question about this. There was a lot of change in the, the tissue tension, the actual symmetry of the muscles either side of the spine. And I should point out also that this adjustment was um, necessary for this baby, but you know, other similar problems won't be treated this way. You might be able to get the result by just changing the posture of the child. You might just rub the tissues either side of the uh, joint 
to release some tension. Um, there's many, many techniques that can be used, but in this particular situation, um, and, you know, we're trying to shine the light on this. I was trying to be, I guess, transparent. Um, we didn't have to post it, but we wanted to educate the public that sometimes one, just one, specific correction in the right spot can make a massive difference to the health of a baby and also to the life of the parents. Are, are there risks involved in this type of spinal manipulation? The risks would be if, they, if it was performed by someone who didn't know what they were doing or if they just took like a general, like global pressure on the baby and just pushed on it. But we would never advocate that. We'd never support anybody that did. Uh, well, in 2013, a four-month-old baby had one of her vertebrae fractured in Melbourne. Were Millicent's parents aware of the risks involved in this sort of therapy? Yeah, well, see, this is why I don't understand, because that, that was proven to be false. That, that, hasn't, that didn't happen. The baby had a congenital problem. Now, that was um, a separate was well one who died from spinal manipulation. Look, this is such a complex issue, uh, we, but we can't run just, out of time. I, yep, go Sorry, for I'll it. just point out quickly that as a, just as a yardstick, if you like, I've been doing this for 20 years and I know lots of other people that have been doing this for 20 and 30, 40 years. And if there was a problem somewhere, if there was any injury ever, I would know about it and I haven't heard of one. I've got international contacts, we've taught overseas, there's an international organisation and I we, haven't heard of one. We've got to wrap there. I'm sorry, Doctor. Sure. Thank you very much for joining okay. us, Guy. We could talk Thanks to you about this all day. Thanks so much for that. Thank you.